Now, uh, in the last video we were looking at um, how price is determined in a perfectly competitive market um, or an industry. We said the price was determined by the market forces um, of supply and demand, hence this two pin analysis that we use. And we were also looking at how do we show if a firm is making a supernormal profit. And we know again the, uh, the differences between supernormal profit. One thing I want to point out to you is that you know, how do we sort of sense straight away, um, without even having to shade in this area, that the firm is making a supernormal profit? Again, if you look at the relationships between the ATC curve and the MR curve, um, this is marginal revenue, this is average cost. You will know that a profit is any revenue above the firm covering its total cost. So at this point, the firm is covering its cost and revenue is above the cost. So the firm is making more revenue than what the firm is bringing in more through revenue than what it's paying out through costs. Okay. Now, we said in the last video that this concept of supernormal profit it acts as an incentive for new firms to enter the industry. Um, and we're going to show the impact of that now uh, on our next diagram. Okay, we said all firms are profit maximizers. They are attracted into an industry because of this concept of supernormal profits. Now, um, I'm not going to waste time drawing out the um, supply and demand. Again, I've already done that um, before the other one. Um, one thing, anything I'm going to do to this diagram, any changes I'm going to make to this diagram, I'm going to do now in green pen. Okay, so you can watch this um, as I go through. Now, looking at our diagram to the right-hand side, um, again, one of the things we're always interested in whenever we do our curves is this MR and MC. Constantly reiterating that MR equals MC, which is our profit maximization rule. So whenever the MR curve, which is this curve here, meets with the ATC curve, this point at which both meet is our um, profit maximization point. So the firm will operate or the firm will produce goods and services at Q1. Okay, and price is set by the market forces. Now, I'm not going to shoot in the area now, as sort of replicating from the last um, video. This area here, okay, the firm's costs is below the, uh, the uh, marginal revenue curve. So the firm is bringing in more than what it is uh, paying out through cost. So this firm is making a profit and it's also making a supernormal profit, a return above normal profits. Okay, so this area up here is an area of supernormal profit. That then will attract new entrants into the firm. The reason it's easy for firms to enter the industry is because of this concept of, first of all, low buyers to entry. There are very few, if none, um, no uh, restrictions or regulations uh, that prevent new firms from entering the industry. New firms will enter because all firms are relatively small. They're not massive, uh, multi-million organisations. Okay, um, it will. As, as much as it may will take, uh, may take up um, some money to enter that industry, it won't be as much maybe as maybe for a firm to set up um, a competitor for uh, BT or to set up an alternative bank, um, for example. Okay, so these firms are only small in comparison to the size of the industry. So the firm's making a supernormal profit. All outsiders who are not producing that good, there's low barriers to entry and there's also um, easy um, or fully mobile factors of production. Okay, so those other firms that think about maybe entering this industry, their land, labour, capital, etc., that is all easy to switch. Or there is no major difficulties uh, in switching their factors of production. So, for example, maybe a farmer producing um, carrots uh, as a blunt example. Um, if they're producing uh, carrots, they then become no longer profitable, okay? Or, or they see that maybe um, uh, onions are more uh, profitable, they can very quickly switch their factors of production. They can still use their land, but they can maybe change their means of production um, to producing a more profitable good, okay? So this firm, uh, individual firm, is making a supernormal profit. How then does the industry react? Well, Firms, outside firms see that this firm is making a supernormal profit, they will think, right, let's enter the industry. Now, whenever new firms enter the industry, the impact on the industry is that it increases market supply. So on our diagram, we now need to show an increase in the market supply curve. So the S supply curve shifts to S1. There's now an increase in our market supply. Always good to draw on your arrows, just make sure the arrows are going in the right direction. Okay, now, as a result of that increase in the um, market supply as a result now of new firms entering the industry more firms are producing this profitable good hence now why we've got the shift this outward shift in the market supply curve for this industry 
Going back, forgetting about this one now to the right hand side, going back even to basic, the very start of AS economics, we were looking at price determination, the use of supply and demand diagrams, the importance of the equilibrium point, showing price determination in that industry. Price and quantity in the industry now has changed. As a result, there has been a movement along this demand curve, okay, an extension along the demand curve. So find now our new equilibrium point. So we'll do our, this now becomes P2. Note that price has decreased. And our new equilibrium quantity now in the industry has increased to Q2. Okay, from P1 to P2, from Q1 to Q2. Price in the industry now has decreased. More firms have entered the industry, more people are producing that good. Ultimately, in relation to A2 economics, there is now more competition in the industry. Okay, so more obviously people will, there's more um, available goods and services. There's greater competition. People then will lower their prices. If they don't lower those prices, then we can note then that there would maybe be a surplus um, at P1. Firms would be over so Firms um, would have a large stock of goods that wouldn't be sold. Okay, so firms in the industry would then ultimately decrease their price to P2. Now, in the previous video, we talked about this concept of um, the firm being a price taker, price being set by the market forces. As the price in the industry now has decreased, the price that the individual firm now will sell at will also decrease. Now, how do we show that? From our new equilibrium point, I'm now going to do again my dashed lines, and again, you might remember the reason we do dashed lines is to indicate that we're not actually drawing a curve, we're just showing, um, in this case, price determination. As a result of price decreasing in the industry, the price equals demand equals AR equals MR curve, that will now change, or more specifically, it will now shift, that shift being a shift downwards to the new price level. Okay, so, if I can, from this point, new price equals demand equals AR equals MR. Now, again, making sure you get your labeling right, um, we're looking at this now as P1 equals D1 equals AR1 equals MR1, okay? Now, you might remember from the last video we were looking at this concept of the, you know, the key focus of a business, profit maximization, where the price equals demand equals AR equals MR curve, we're interested in that, notably the marginal revenue curve. When MR equals MC, meet this point here, move down to get Q1, which is the quantity the firm will sell at, that was at the original um, price equals demand equals AR equals MR curve. We've now got a new curve. So ultimately now we've got a new profit maximizing level of output, uh, which will be a Q2. And we've also got a new profit maximizing price level at P2. MC has still remained the same. Citrus Paribus will assume that all costs in this case have remained the same. Uh, we're only looking at this direct impact on price. So on the new price equals demand equals AR equals MR curve, we've now got a new marginal revenue curve. MR2, or one in this case, equals MC, which is this point here, our new profit maximizing level of output. Do your dash line down. This then becomes Q2. So, sort of comparing and contrasting two diagrams, in the industry, price decreases. Quantity then increases from Q1 to Q2 in the industry. For the individual firm now, this area here would have been an area of supernormal profit. Okay, so this area here would have been, had there not have been a change uh, in the price or not, had there not have been a change in market supply, this would have been the area of supernormal profit. Okay, because the cost is below the MR curve. Other firms seen that as an incentive. They then entered the industry because of the low barriers to entry. Uh, they also entered because of their fully mobile factors of production. And ultimately, perfect knowledge within the industry as well. These new firms, they you know it's no secret that this firm is making a supernormal profit. And as a result, because of that perfect knowledge, they then seen this as an opportunity um, to profit maximize. Shareholders obviously want to uh, maximize their returns. Um, and they obviously then entered the industry because they knew this product was profitable. Okay, they have access to that information. It's not difficult to acquire um, that uh, information. 
As a result of that then, the price um, curve, uh, this curve then has shifted downwards. Again, do your arrow downwards to indicate to the examiner that this has um, shifted downwards. The profit maximizing level of output has changed from point A now to point B, which is down here. Okay. Um, as a result of that, the quantity that the firm produces, the profit maximizing level of output has changed from Q1 to Q2. The firm now is producing goods at Q2, so the individual firm now has decreased their um, output, they've decreased the quantity of the goods and services that um, they are producing. The reason for that is because of the increased competition in the industry. Now, one last thing I just want to bring to your attention is that with this diagram, we have shown that this area in red here originally was an area of supernormal profit. Now, make sure you make this clear um, to the examiners to avoid you getting confused or them getting confused as to what you're talking about. This red area was an original area of supernormal profits. The industry changed. As a result, then, the firm being a price taker, the individual firm now has changed. Circumstances in the firm has changed. As a result, this area now is an area of supernormal profit that has now been lost. The firm now is no longer making a supernormal profit because all three curves, price equals demand equals AR equals MR, now equals the ATC curve, the lowest point of the ATC curve, now equals the MC curve. The firm is now said to be making only a normal profit. Okay, now which in a business sense would sort of be seen as the break-even um, point. They're making neither a profit or a loss. In economics, as much as we say they're not actually making anything, we say they're making a normal profit. It's just enough to keep those factors of production in the industry. The firm will not leave the industry because it still is profitable um, to be in the industry. They're not making a loss. Okay, um, notable they're not making a loss, so they will still remain in the industry. The firm will only leave the industry if they're unable to cover their average variable costs. Okay, but quick overview um, before we finish. If a firm is making supernormal profit, number one, it acts as an incentive for new firms to enter the industry. Number two, supply then will increase uh, in the industry. Number three, that will decrease the price levels and increase competition. Number four, it will decrease the price equals demand equals AR equals MR curve for the firm. And point five then, profits will decrease. In this example, profits have been reduced from supernormal profits right down now to normal profits and the profit maximizing level of output has now decreased from Q1 to Q2 simply because going back to the characteristics of the low buyer's entry fully mobile factors of production and perfect knowledge. Firms can and will, new firms can and will enter that industry to reap some of these profits. Firms in perfect comp competition can only make supernormal profits in the short run but now only make normal profits in the long run.